Well, good morning. I know I told you that I um, probably wasn't going to have one today since I have a funeral this morning, but um, I have a little bit of time and thought I'd do a short one anyway, if anything, so try to be an encouragement, see if anybody uh, wants to get on here. <clears throat> oh, I see Miss Mandy's on here. All right. <clears throat> so at least, uh, well, Mandy, right now it's just showing it's me and you. So, oh, there's Brian. So, Brian, I hope you're staying safe over there in the Meeker area. All these crazy fires going on. But, uh, <clears throat> anyway, so... So we got a, a couple on here, so that's good. Um, it's going to be a little different today. I, I just thought I, I was preparing for the funeral this morning and, and uh, um, you know, thinking about what what scripture to share with uh, with the family today. And, and uh, so I... That's what I'm going to do today. I'm just going to share a little bit of, of what I'm going to share with these guys today. And and um, I was just thinking of the promises, the promises that, that God gives us. And so I wrote some of these down. And like I said, it'll probably be a little shorter today. My mind's kind of on the, uh, I'm kind of a one-track guy, you know, so it's hard to um, multitask on certain things, <clears throat> but I just want to think about some of the, the promises that God gives us. And uh, one of them that we, we know that the world doesn't offer. And, and right now we're away from having any kind of uh, peace. But uh, God gives us a promise in Isaiah 26 and uh, verse 3. And he tells us, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. And um, here, a, a reminder that um, the, the peace that, that our Savior gives us, the, the peace that, that God gives us, and, and he gives us a perfect peace. And that perfect peace is, is actually uh, emphasized. And, and in the Hebrew, a lot of times when they want to emphasize something, they would just repeat the word. And, and it is in this. It's, that will keep them in peace, peace. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a a perfect peace that, that God gives us. And, and what we have to do is keep our minds stayed on him and just keep looking to him and, and trusting him and, 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 uh, just walking with him. And, and, and he gives us a peace that, that is unexplainable. And, uh, it, he also gives us another, uh, scripture in, in Jeremiah 29 and verse 11 it says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. And, um, you know, our world is so upset right now and turned upside down. And, and you know, I saw some guy up there in Oregon was, uh, be, you know, beaten severely over the weekend. And uh, there's some guy in Texas that, as far as I know, he's still uh, locked up in his house. He shot four police officers today and uh maybe has some of his family hostage and uh you know just uh, a lot of turmoil in our world and and here's god saying that for i know the thoughts that i think toward you and so he he does give us a peace i, I mean there's all kinds of scriptures and that that go with that and uh you know john john 14 27 uh jesus was talking to his disciples and there at the beginning of that, um, sorry. There at the beginning of that, we know that uh, in in John 14 was telling them he's getting ready to leave and and walk away, you know, and, and go to the cross and and he said, I, "Hey, I'm going to prepare a place for you." And so, trust in me. And he says, "Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid." And so uh, in this, in this uh, turmoil of this world today, then what God wants us to do is look to him and, and, he, and he truly does give us peace. And uh, we thank the Lord for that. And how does he give us peace? Well, he gives us peace by having peace with him, having made peace with God. And, and 
you know, people sometimes don't want to hear this, but, you know, we have a sin problem. I have one, you have one. I mean, everybody in the world has a sin problem and we need to deal with it. And, you know, I think there are, there are those in the world that believe a lie that uh, they're okay in themselves and they want to compare themselves to other people and think, well, I'm a whole lot better than this guy or that guy. And, you know, comparing ourselves to each other isn't healthy at all. And uh, we, we all are in that same boat. And, and so he tells us that, you know, why Christ came. And people want to think that as a pastor, we're, we're judgmental, we're condemning, uh, had a guy, you know, tell me that, you know, that, that I'm condemning people to hell when, when, uh, I, I tell people that, look, you need to trust Christ as your savior. If you haven't called on Christ and you haven't placed your faith in him, then you're, you're, you're disobeying the gospel. And if you disobey the gospel, the, the one sin that is unforgivable is, is the, the, the sin of unbelief. And if you will not trust in Christ, then you will go to hell. I mean, anyone, and, and it's a scary thing. And, and, and the people think that you're being judgmental for that. Look, I'm not. I'm just telling you what Jesus says. It says in John three fifteen through 17, For whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then I love verse 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And so Jesus didn't come condemning people. Jesus came to save people. And and those that, that believe on him, trust in him, place their faith in him for their salvation, have eternal life. <clears throat> and it is that simple. You know, people try to make things a lot harder than they are and they're and they're truly not they're it's a it's a very simple path of salvation because of what christ has done and and then you have the path to heaven i mean jesus said that in john 3 in verse 7 he says marvel not that i said unto thee you must be born again i mean jesus said it god said it himself if we're if we're going to be on our way to heaven then we need to do it god's way and god's way it is through Christ. And John 14, again, Jesus told him, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And, and it, uh, I, I, you know, when, when we think about the blessings of, of what God has done for us and, and, and even salvation, he's made it so simple. And the, the burden of, of sin has been forgiven. I mean, there, there's truly nothing better than knowing that your sins are forgiven. And, and it truly does help to give you a peace, and even in the midst of a crazy world right now. And sometimes I, I don't allow that peace to uh, direct my life. That's what, you know, God's showing me in all of this, even as I'm preparing for this funeral, you know, is that as a believer, I, I need to have I need to have the peace that passes all understanding because of what God has done. And God made peace <clears throat> with himself through his son Christ by sacrificing himself on that cross for the sins of the world. Because the, those sins, because we are sinners, we're not at peace with God. And we need to make peace with God. The only way we're ever going to make peace with God is through Jesus. Jesus is the peace. And when we call on Christ and trust him as our Savior, then we have made peace with God uh, through Christ, who is that sacrifice. And, and so we believe the gospel. That, that's what he tells us. That's how we make peace with God. 1 Corinthians 15, Paul was writing to the Corinthians there, and he said, For I uh, delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. And then he tells us in Romans, he says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And, and so I just, I, I think of these promises. I mean, he promises us peace. He, he promises us eternal life. He, he promises that, hey, I'll show you the way. And Jesus is the way. His death, his burial, his resurrection, that sacrifice was made for our sins. And when we call on him, 
and we trust him, we make it a point in our life, at some point in our life, there needs to be a time where, where we can say, yes, my faith has been placed in Christ as my Savior. And, and just live by faith, knowing that, that God keeps his promises. And, and then the last thing, uh, I, I've been looking at this more than uh, I have in a long time, but in uh, Revelation 21, it tells us when the new heavens and the new earth are come down that God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. And, and then he tells us, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruit, and yielded her fruit every month, and leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations, and there shall be no more curse. And, I mean, it just goes on, and, and uh, truly uh, such a blessing to know the promise of heaven. And, and he said unto me, these sayings are faithful and true. God, God is true to his word. And God says that you call on me, I'll save you. So we, we trust him for our salvation. He says, if, if I save you, then I've made peace with you. And, and we're not going to deal with God's wrath. And I thank God for that. And not only that, but he gives us that eternal life. He's shown us the path to heaven. He gives us a promise of heaven. But here on earth, he gives us a promise of peace. And, and to walk peacefully in, in, a, in a crazy world, we can still have a settledness and a peace in our hearts and our lives that only comes through Christ. And that's a blessing. I mean, that's such an encouragement to me. And uh, it's a good way, really, it's a good way to start a Monday morning, isn't it? To uh, remember uh, who our Savior is, what he's done for us, and the promise of heaven. The promise of heaven. And that uh, uh, one day we will, uh, we'll see our Savior face to face. And... Uh, it's going to be, a, it's, it is a good day. It's going to be a good day to, to tell these people as they bury their dad, their grandfather, their, uh, you know, their uncle, uh, their friend that, um, you know what, th this life, this is, uh, this is really just the beginning. It truly is just the beginning of things. And, uh, let's be prepared for heaven and, uh, let's look forward to that. And until then, you know what? We just keep serving the Lord. We just keep walking with him and uh, tell others about Christ today. And uh, pray you guys have a good day. I know I told you it's a little bit shorter today, but uh, uh, anyway, you pray for me too today. I can be an encouragement and help to the family and that uh, we just uh, see God honored today through our lives. So God bless you guys and, and have a great day today.